Welcome to Pound Posse Presents, where I am um, just making sure that in spite of our, our little problem last week, we are actually recording from the beginning of the show. My man Speedo is giving me thumbs up, so we're good to go. Last week we had, I think it was just a bad disc, and um, it was the first few minutes of the show that didn't get caught, but you know, you got the gist. The show went on. We only lost about three, four minutes of it, so... It's all good. These things happen, you know. I mean, I've had, I've had some interesting things go wrong so far, and uh, you know, it's just all par for the course. <laughs> I think that uh, Speedo was more worried about it all week than I've been, because I still uploaded the show, and a lot of you watched it. We covered a whole bunch of dogs, and um, they are P.S. still all looking for homes. Uh, anyway, tonight I'm going to open with a very special birthday. Uh, there is the most amazing woman. You know, you, you, there's so many people that you meet in so many different ways, and Facebook brings a lot of people together that maybe ordinarily would never meet, and this is one of them. I have never met this person, and I would love to someday, and I know I will, but she is... Like I said, just a wonderful, wonderful individual. She has the most incredible zest for life. She's always doing something. She's always going somewhere. She, she's got, like, from the outside looking in anyway, she's got, like, this really fabulous life going on. Um, she has great plans. She sets goals for herself. She has ambition and drive, and she makes things happen. You know, she doesn't just talk about it. She doesn't just, uh, you know, wish and dream. She, she really, really and truly um, ha makes things happen. She's, she's, a, she's a doer. And I'm quite thankful that she has included me in some of her plans. And, you know, she, she clearly has some kind of use for me, which is a beautiful thing. She operates a rescue, so she's very uh, heavily involved in the dog world. Actually, I know she's not even in the country right now because she's off doing uh, some dog thing, crazy thing that she is. So bless her heart, though. I, you know, no, no judgment here. She's, like, seriously doing her thing. But anyway, she's the driving force behind the Forever Rescued calendar, which, you know, I beat that to death because Mojo's in it and I was involved in it. But I just want to say happy birthday, Jessica Price. Her birthday was this week, and she's really an incredible person, and she has promised me that she will be on the show, and this is my way of reminding her. But... Um, she will be. Uh, we we kind of like, I keep throwing it at her, and there's another project in the works, and it may be the perfect opportunity for her to come on, and we can discuss that, and everybody can get to meet her and see what a wonderful person she is. So, Jessica, I hope it was great. She's way, like I said, out of the country, so it's going to be probably a few days before she even knows that uh, she's got something to watch in the beginning of Pound Posse Presents this week. Okay, well... For those of you who remember, and for those of you who don't, you will have an introduction. Coco is back in the news, and it's not necessarily good news. She's okay, but we will we will cover her story. Um, Zach, can we have a quick a quick look at our little Coco? And we have her up. That's Coco. Look at that face. She's just a love. Um, she was found wandering in North Haven. She was taken into the North Haven Animal Shelter where she sat, unfortunately. And part of her story, you know, I wrote about her a couple of times in my column. So you can always check that out for a more in-depth uh, story behind her maybe than I, I will actually get to here. But she was adopted. And she was not just adopted, but her story goes that she was adopted to the same family twice, which was a real 
big mistake, but there's no finger pointing here. Um, Coco was adopted to a home with little kids. There was no structure. Um, you know, it was the kind of thing where the kids were homeschooled, they were young, uh, hanging on her, and you know, sometimes that's hard for a dog. I mean, honestly, I'd go crazy if I had little kids like 24 seven, you know, hanging on me and you know, so I'm not a parent, but anyway, um, <laughs> laughter in the studio. Um, she was probably not in the best situation to begin with. There was an incident where somebody was on their property uh, at the house and she ran up to the dog and was barking at it. Who said that she was trying to attack? Who said she was trying to play? Um, you know, Coco didn't, she, she was protecting her property. You know, she may not have been in the best situation, but it was still her home. So there was a dog walking on her lawn and she barked at it. So, you know, the people never had her spayed. She was in heat. There was an awful lot of stuff going on that probably, you know, unfortunately, when you adopt from a pound, there, there's not necessarily the screening that would go on if you were adopting an animal from a rescue. So in any event, um, these people gave her back to the shelter. They turned her in. They said, you know, that she wasn't the right dog for them, blah, blah, blah. And a few days later, returned to the shelter and wanted her back. And the big mistake that the shelter made, and like I said, there's, there's not, I, I would never have done it, but they gave her back. They gave her back to the family and, you know, it continued. I, I forget the sequence of which event happened when and what was the second reason why they gave her up, but it shouldn't have happened. And, you know, they gave her back to the people and they turned her in again to the shelter. You know, you, you kind of have to understand that if somebody gives a dog up once for any reason at all, they're probably going to bail on that dog again down the road because they did it once. So Coco sat in the shelter um, for a good seven months and she became urgent. Zach, I'll take the camera back. Uh, Coco became urgent after sitting in the shelter and she became a very, very high profile dog like some of them do. She had her own Facebook page, which is actually still running, uh, Rescue Coco. And Rescue Coco was very fortunate to have the most, one of the most wonderful administrators, I think, in, in the world, <laughs> Marie Marsh, who advocated for Coco day in and day out, sharing her and sharing her and sharing her. Um, you know, she had reached out to me, um, which, you know, I, I, everybody got really emotionally involved in Coco. Marie Marsh, I have to say, uh, we, we have wished her a happy birthday before and all that, but uh, she lives in England. So you tell me how wonderful she is to worry about our dogs here in the States. And she took up the, the cause for Coco like it was her job. And she's still on the Rescue Coco page and she will be fighting for Coco again. However, Coco at least is not in a shelter where she's going to lose her life. Um, you know, there was a lot of us who got very, very wrapped up in it. And, you know, she was running out of time. I think it came down to where the shelter wanted a rescue to pull her because they wanted to be sure that she would have the kind of backing that a rescue would give her rather than an individual adoption. So it became kind of one of those needle in a haystack deals where they were looking for a quiet home with no other dogs, no little kids. And that was because of, you know, was she, did she have a problem with other dogs? Did she have a problem with kids? Who knew, but why set her up to fail? Well, our friends, 20 Paws to Share, who, believe me, I'm not playing favorites, folks. I think the last three shows I've had 20 Paws to Share dogs involved in my stories. But um, it just so happens that this is where I met those ladies as well who networked and, and I mean, they screened so many people. They, they, 
they went crazy trying to find the right, absolutely wonderful, perfect match. And they thought they finally did. There was a gentleman um, who fit their criteria. You know, he was quite a drive away, but they made that trip. They pulled her from North Haven. They got her spayed, finally, um, you know, loved on her, took her to the beach, I think, and got her a hamburger, if I remember correctly. Um, you know, they, they brought her to the adopter. They stayed for a while. They made sure that everything was, you know, you get a feeling. When, when you know what you're doing, you get a feeling it's either going to work or not. Um, so as of October of 2011, she was safe. She was in her new home. It seemed like her happily ever after. She settled right in. I mean, she, uh, from what I remember being told, she just kind of like loved up on her new daddy like he was always her daddy. So it's, they left with the best feeling. I mean, there's, there's nothing better than to know that there's already something going on when, you, when you're trying to find a dog a home between the potential adopter and, and the dog. So they did it all right. And you know, we all breathe that collective sigh of relief that we do when a dog is safe. You know, again, no better feeling than, wow, you know, we did it. We pulled a dog. We got the right home or what seems like the right home. And, you know, you kind of like, we're done, thank God. But it doesn't really always stick, unfortunately, no matter how careful you are. Um, you know, 20 Paws to Share kept in touch. Coco was... Every dog is special, but Coco was such a high-profile dog with her own needs and all that, and they kept in touch, and they kept following up, and they were, you know, everything's fine, yeah, you know, Coco's great, everything's good, but recently they discovered that he bailed on her, and, you know, nothing breaks my heart more. I mean, this poor dog, I wrote in my, in my piece on her, the first piece, you know, can't she catch a break, and so it kind of came out that he had rehomed her. Um, you know, in the end, it was not the kind of home that 20 Paws to Share would ever have approved for any dog, never mind Coco. Um, you know, so they had to get to work again to try to get her back. Uh, keep in mind that rescues do have, unlike a pound, where you're just like, yep, I'm adopting this dog, you sign your life away, I'll license it and I'll do this and that. With a rescue, there's a contract usually, um, you know, that if anything goes wrong, they will take the dog back. That, um, you know, he clearly his rehoming her without reaching out to the rescue was in violation of the contract, so they really did have claim to take her back. So they worked it out, and they did get Coco back, um, brought her to the vet. I mean, she's unfortunately, she's overweight, which is one of the worst things you can do to a dog. Um, you know, you may want to give a dog treats and food and all that, but it wears on a dog like it worse than it wears on people, trust me. Um, you know, they've had her at the vet. She's otherwise healthy. She's not up for adoption yet. She will be. Uh, however, in all fairness, it's been quite a period of time since she was placed. You know, when she was in the pound, it was, you were going by what you were told, what you thought you knew about her. Uh, she was in one bad placement. They tried to work very hard to get her in a situation where she would be set up not to fail. Now, all this time later, she has to, they have to learn how she is. They have to evaluate her, you know. Is she good with other dogs? Is she good, you know, with certain people? Um, you know, it's sort of a getting to know you thing now. Um, you know, people change, animals change. They want to make sure that when they place her again, they put her in the best possible situation, um, you know, which of course, it, it, it's a double-edged sword. There's, there's a lot of times you really you think you're, you're, people make themselves appear to be whatever they want you to believe they are. And, you know, if, you, if you're savvy, maybe you see through some stuff, sometimes even the best of us get fooled. 
So, you know, I, I'm really not trying to point fingers at, you know, the person who <coughs> they did adopt her to. Um, you know, I guess in some respects there really are certain situations where a person can no longer handle caring for an animal. And the right thing to do is to, if you have a contract, contact the rescue or try to find a responsible home. Um, you know, I can't fathom having to part with any of my animals, but sometimes things do happen. So I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be uh, how I can be sometimes, you know. I mean, a commitment is a commitment, and, you know, you've got to honor your commitment, you adopt an animal, it's for the animal's life. You know, sometimes things happen. Um, I'm not trying to take that route. Uh, Coco, like I said, is safe. She's not in the same situation, fortunately, that she was in once before, where her life is going to be on the line. Um, if you want to stay up on Coco's story, 20 Paws to Share uh, has her, and Rescue Coco is the Facebook page, where Marie will definitely, um, you know, as the news is, is available, she will definitely post it, and certainly, I have to give 20 Paws to share kudos for keeping in touch with their adopters because, you know, how many rescues really would have found that out or how many, if, if you're not do staying on top of these things, they never would have known what happened to her until, you know, God only knows where she would have been. I mean, if she wasn't in a really great place when they took her back, who knows? They could have handed her off and handed her off. You know, there was already that other story last week about the dog who was given to somebody and given to somebody and then let loose in the street. So you never know. You just never know. You're, you, I give 20 Paws to share a lot of credit for keeping in touch and staying on top of, of what was happening. And even though perhaps they were not being told the truth all the way along, they, they stayed on it and they did uncover what happened. So, you know, keep in mind when you adopt an animal, yes, it's a commitment. If you take a dog from a pound, it's a different story than when you adopt from a rescue. And a lot of people, I've, I've covered this before, get really annoyed at some of the invasive or, or what they feel are invasive questions on, on an application, you know, the vet checks, the home checks, et cetera, et cetera. But there's a method to the madness, you know. Um, the people, at the, at the rescue are responsible for that dog's life and they want to make sure that its, it's, it's needs are going to be met and everything is going to be the way it should be for the animal. They want to set it up not to fail. They want to set the dog up to, su to succeed. Um, and the follow-up is, is a really great thing. You know, don't get annoyed if you get a phone call, hey, how's it going and, you know, is everything okay? Because that just means that, that they're involved and they're, they're trying to, you know, really prove that they care. Um, not so much for the people, but for the animal, you know. Um, you know, you really, it's a hard thing with rescue sometimes because you take a gamble when you place a dog or a cat or any other animal um, that in, you know, good faith people are taking this animal and taking responsibility, um, you know. Clearly, there are people who will try to adopt an animal that's in danger from across the country, and that's not necessarily, long distance adoptions aren't necessarily the worst thing, but a lot of rescues try to keep an adoption within their area, and there's criticism for that. Well, the reason for that is because there's a safety net for the dog. You know, if somebody from Utah had adopted Coco and all this happened, you know, ha what was going to happen? Who was going to be there for her to fall back on? So don't criticize rescues for wanting to keep an animal local because, yeah, even though your home may be great and this and that, again, people are only as good as they say they are. Who would ever just ship an animal off? That, that just boggles my mind. Oh, yeah, I'm in Utah. I want your dog in Connecticut. Okay, we'll put her on a transport and send her out to you without even knowing who you are. Just because you look good on paper, um, sometimes, you know, the vibes just aren't there. And, you know, you, you can say you're anybody. Who knows? So it, it, it's kind of a, a good thing to keep an animal close enough so that you can get there in a day's, a day's drive. Um, 
again, what happens to the animal when something goes wrong? You know, the rescue's gonna remain responsible and the rescue's gonna take back that animal. It, it's definitely, it, it's, it's the way to go. Like I said, it, it's risky. It, there's not necessarily anything wrong with it, but it's, it's definitely risky to, to send an animal off. Sometimes it's a last ditch option, but it, again, y there, I'm sure it causes a lot of people sleepless nights because uh, you can't just get there and, and you can't be sure that the long distance return will happen if, if something goes wrong. So, you know, if he had reached out, I, I'm sure that um, 20 Paws to Share would have taken her right back or taken any steps. So now we know uh, all about that. Uh, I'm just going to go on to a pre-Easter speech because, you know, uh, Easter's coming. And um, people seem to tend to like to get the bunnies the live Easter bunny for their kids. <laughs> Speedo, so funny. Um, you want you, people see some of the stores, not really stores, but some places will have chicks and little ducklings and oh yeah, you know, it's all springy and Easter and all that. Yeah, it's not a good idea, folks. Buy the chocolate ones, buy the stuffed ones. Don't buy the live animals. A live animal is a commitment. It's a life you're responsible for. A rabbit can live over 10 years. A rabbit's not a totally maintenance-free creature. You have to take it to the vet once in a while, you know, um, you know, spay, neuter, stuff like that is, is not out of the realm to keep it healthy and, and, and longer life. Uh, a rabbit just can't be kept in the corner in a cage. You need to exercise it, it needs attention, its nails need to be clipped, it would probably love to be brushed because they shed. Uh, you know, you can't just let them run loose because they'll chew on stuff, chew through wires, chew through walls, whatever. Uh, it's, it's, you have to clean the cage, you have to feed it, and you have to feed it quality food or it's gonna be sick. Uh, a rabbit is a lot more work than you would think, it's, it's not, you know, in the realm of things, it's not like a hamster or a guinea pig where it's in a habitat and that's like mostly where it might stay. Even a guinea pig though, you wouldn't, they need attention. Hamsters need attention, but not to the level of a rabbit. The bigger your animal, the more attention and exercise, et cetera, and so it's all relative. Um, ducks, chicks, they're messy. Uh, they need certain parameters for, for their thriving environment. You can't just throw a chick outside when it gets a little bigger. I mean, what are you gonna do? It, it just like, talk, you can't just toss it outside. It has to have an enclosure, it has to have a habitat. You know, you don't build, same thing with a rabbit. You don't build a good enough enclosure outside. You've got foxes, coyotes, bobcats, you name it in this area, they're gonna get it and it's not gonna be great. Um, it, you're gonna end up with the thing dying out there. What are you gonna do with it in the winter time? Um, ducks, yeah, you can set up a little wading pool and you know have a lot of fun with it as it's growing up. Let it swim in your bathtub, whatever you're gonna do. But what happens when you're tired of it? You know, you can't just take a duck and let it loose. It's not gonna survive. Um, you know, a, a duck that was, a little duckling that was really cute when it was small, uh, is gonna grow up and have its own needs and they're basically domestic. They're not gonna survive in the wild uh, if they, you know, you're, it, it's, you don't wanna put an animal in that position. Why would you do that? Um, you know, I, I've, I've, you hear of it all the time. Oh yeah, well we're just gonna let it go. Unless you, if you want to have your, your children have that opportunity to raise a duck or a chicken or whatever, make a plan ahead of time. There are, entities that will take in, like farms and this and that, that will take in these, these creatures, but you can't just like wake up one day and say, all right, well that's it, it's gotta go and I'm gonna just go bring it. And if they don't take it, I'm gonna let it go. Make a plan ahead of time. I'm gonna raise this with my kids and we're gonna have some fun and whatever, but have a plan. Contact them before you even take that creature home 
and say, look, I want to do this and will you have the room in six months or you know, can we make an agreement? Plan it out. Don't just take it home until you're tired of it and then you know, whatever happens, happens. Um, even a chicken, you, know, you post them, you see them all the time, post it on Craigslist. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, really, you, goats and chickens and everything else, they can fall into the wrong hands as well. So you really think it through. Don't buy the live cre creatures. They're adorable. Um, you know, a couple years ago, I fell in love with a little duckling in a place. <laughs> oh, he's laughing at me. I loved it, and I, 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 I stressed out I wanted to bring it home. I said, you know what? Think about what you're doing. You can't. It's, it's not practical. Uh, I have birds. I can vouch for the fact that they are messy, and a duck is not even like, or a chicken is, is going to be like the next step beyond what I'm used to or even you're used to if you've got birds at home. So having said all that, I know I'm in a speech mode and I'm probably getting pretty close. How much time we have left? Uh, to about a minute and 30 seconds. About a minute and 30 seconds. All right. So, huh? You'll give me two minutes. I know Sp Speedo's always like, you know, stretching it out and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, goodbye, it's time to go. Anyway, um, here's a point where I'll invite any of you who have a, a foster dog to come on. Uh, doors always open. If you have a foster dog that you want to get some exposure for, I'm more than happy to have you on as long as, you know, we can pick a mutually agreeable date and, and meet whatever needs that I have to set up for you. If you are someone with a rescue, you're more than welcome to come and join me. I'd love to have you on. Uh, I'm working on having a couple of uh, dogs on that I think you guys will all really enjoy getting to meet. And I extended another invitation today, so keeping our fingers crossed that uh, this will all come to pass. You know, unfortunately, everybody's got their own their own lives and not everybody can commit to certain days and it is what it is I try the best I can anyway otherwise you're stuck with me oh well and they're giving me the time out here so I'm gonna say peace love and dogs until next time thank you for joining me Dawn I hope you made it home to watch the show We'll hear from you on Speedo's show if you did or didn't. And uh, good night until next week.